In 1775, Mechlor Adam Weichard, a German physician, published Der Verlustig Arts. The text contained the description of ADHD-like behaviors, possibly the first ever such description in medical literature. In March of 1902, Sir George Frederick Steele, a British pediatrician, gave a series of lectures on some abnormal physical conditions in children. In 1987, the third equation of DSM went through some revision, and the name of ADHD was finally added. For a child to be identified to have ADHD, he or she must have inattention symptoms present for six months. Some inattention symptoms described in the DSM-5 are the failure to give attention to anyone talking to them, being distracted very easily, very forgetful in everyday activities, making careless mistakes in homework or any other activity. The child will also not enjoy activities that require a lot of mental effort for extended period of time. The hyperactivity and impulsivity symptoms must also be present for at least six months. A child with hyperactivity and impulsivity symptoms will talk in an excessive manner, they will have trouble waiting for the turn, and will most likely interrupt others when they are talking. A child cannot be seated for extended periods of time, will fidget or squirm in their seat, and cannot take part in quiet, relaxing activities. In order to be diagnosed with ADHD, a child must have severe symptoms present before age seven. The symptoms must be consistent in different settings. There needs to be clear proof that the symptoms interfere with their schoolwork or social life, and there must be no other possible disorder to explain the symptoms. The DSM-5 also requires the presence of six symptoms for children and five for adults in order to be diagnosed as ADHD. Typical symptoms include cannot sit still, talkative, cannot concentrate for long periods of time, has trouble waiting for the turn. There are three kinds of ADHD. Combined presentation, symptoms of both intention and hyperactivity and impulsivity are present for six months. Predominantly in attendance presentation, intention symptoms but not enough hyperactivity and impulsivity symptoms. Predominantly hyperactive, impulsive presentation, enough hyperactivity and impulsivity symptoms but not enough intention symptoms. Plus, some people with ADHD might be able to pay attention but not be still, or might be still but not pay attention, or not pay attention and not sit still. Many other conditions coexist with ADHD. One of the most popular are learning disabilities, such as dyslexia, because a lack of concentration makes it hard for children to focus and learn. Another condition that may be present along with ADHD is oppositional defiance disorder. In oppositional defiance disorder, children are disobedient and have outbursts of temper. People with ADHD may also suffer from depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder. Like most psychological disorders, ADHD does not have a cure yet, and there are many possible treatments that lessen or help to manage ADHD symptoms. One treatment is behavioral interventions. In order to help children, the parents should set the same routine every day. Other treatments include medication. There is a range of medication for stimulants to non-stimulants. Non-stimulant medications do not act as fast stimulants, but are long-lasting. Other treatments include therapies. Hyperactivity experience tends to lessen with age, but the intentions last into adulthood. As teenage years, ADHD kids might go into long periods of depression or anxiety. Children who have coexisting disorders are also more likely to drop out of school. People with this disorder will still need treatment even when they become adults. Down syndrome has been alluded to in art and literature for centuries, but only recently has it been determined to be a distinct condition by John Langdon Down, an English physician. The French physician Jérôme Lejeune observed 47 rather than 46 chromosomes in the cells of affected individuals, and later other researchers determined that an extra copy of chromosome 21 was to blame. Down syndrome can usually be identified at birth via observation. Key features include low muscle tone, slanted eyes, and a single crease across the palm of the hand. A karyotype or a fish test can be used to confirm a diagnosis. As an affected child gets older, it is common to see mental impairment. DSM-5 criteria for intellectual disability commonly associated with Down syndrome include deficits in intellectual functioning, which includes reasoning, planning, problem solving, abstract thinking, judgment, academic and experiential learning, and impairments in adaptive functioning, which includes limited ability in communication, social skills, and personal independence. Individuals with Down syndrome commonly have an impaired ability to take care of themselves. They may have trouble feeding, bathing, cleaning, and cooking, and doing other routine activities performed in the community. There is no cure for Down syndrome. However, there are ways parents in a good environment and education can improve development of affected children. Speech therapy in an enriched learning environment can greatly improve quality of life. Related behavioral issues can be managed with counseling or medication. In the United States, many with Down syndrome learn to read and write and are able to work and can live semi-independently. However, those with the condition are at higher risk of earlier death. This is largely due to heart problems common in individuals with Down syndrome, but improved medical care has increased the average lifespan. The Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD, is a neurodevelopmental disorder characterized primarily by communication shortfalls, exemplary gratia, difficulty in replying, reading nonverbal signals, and building a sense of camaraderie. In the early 20th century, autistic children were nearly always classified as mentally retarded and emotionally disturbed. Psychiatrist Leo Kanner challenges perception in his research paper, Autistic Disturbances of Effective Contact, in which he argues that while the 11 autistic children from his studies occasionally learn material slower than their peers, they were certainly not moronic, schizoid, and feeble-minded. Kanner's description of these children established the category of early infantile autism, the Kainer syndrome. Concurrently, Hans Asperger found that a few children with average intelligence and sufficient development in language still exhibited an abnormal extent of trouble communicating. He labeled them as high-functioning autistics, children with Asperger syndrome. In 1997, Daniel Rosen suggested that Kainer syndrome and Asperger syndrome exist on the same continuum, one in which Kainer's span the more severe end of the spectrum and Asperger's represented the light autism. He formed a wedge-like diagram of the ASD, indicating that there are more individuals with Asperger's than Kainer's, and that quite a few individuals with Asperger's are indistinguishable from non-diagnosed persons. The overarching real 
realization when it comes to discussing ASD is that no two patients are identical in their exhibition of symptoms. The symptom held most common is an inability to communicate, yet the extent to which communication is barred varies. To emphasize the disparity, certain autistic patients cannot communicate, while others with more mild autism have difficulty interpreting gestures keeping the conversation going. ASD symptoms also include interest in specialized subjects, extreme sensitivity, and physical discord. These symptoms can be identified at an early age, especially for severe autistics. Children with the mild Asperger syndrome might not be classified as an autistic until their interacting complications become apparent in school. The DSM-IV's model was most effective for school-aged children, but a paltry erroneous in the evaluation of younger patients. The concept was to classify autistic children under autistic disorder, Asperger's disorder, childhood disintegrative disorder, and catch-all diagnosis. To reduce the number of misdiagnosed children, the SM5 revised ASD so that the majority of individuals were diagnosed for autistic symptoms earlier in life. Medical issues related to ASD include seizure, genetic, and gastrointestinal disorders. Between 46 and 85% of autistic children have chronic constipation, diarrhea, abdominal pain, or vomiting complications. 39% experience seizure. Autistic children may also have tuberous sclerosis, angel man syndrome, fragile X syndrome, or chromosome 15 duplication syndrome. ASD cannot be cured, but treatment alleviates a multitude of symptoms. Risperidone, an antibiotic medicine, and quetiapine, a typical antipsychotic, treat schizophrenia, irritability, and bipolar disorder, among the more adverse effects of autism. Patients may also consult specialists in anger management, applied behavior analysis, sensory processing, online speech therapy, and animal-assisted therapy. At a young age, autistic children should obtain unconditional positive regard from their parents, siblings, and, if possible, from teachers and classmates. Encouragement to discuss without repercussions and insensitive discrimination will augment the child's acceptance of communication and self. Autism symptoms typically decrease with age, in some cases so much so that ASD diagnosis may be removed. As such, most autistic patients lead normal lives. Those with ASD receive a better prognosis if they have an intelligence quotient above 50, can speak before the age of 6, and apply their skills practically.